Europe is experiencing the worst drought seen in the last 500 years, and its effects are evident in the continent's parched rivers. Major rivers like the Danube, Rhine, Loire, and Po are drying up and experts fear they may never recover. Does this mean the end of life as we know it? Or are we prepared for the repercussions of global warming worldwide? Welcome to our channel, Nature Unraveled. In this video, we'll discuss the dire situation faced by Europe's once flowing rivers and what we can expect in the future. Stay with us as we reveal shocking discoveries made by scientists about what's happening to Europe's rivers. The link between global warming and climate change is one we have heard about for many, many years now. And experts have been warning governments and industries around the world to accept the extent of damage we're causing the planet and take immediate remedial steps to evade a major disaster. Unfortunately, all these warnings have fallen on deaf ears and here we are standing at the brink of manufactured calamity. While the effects of climate change can be witnessed in various parts of the world, the situation in Europe is worsening day by day. Following devastating heat waves and extreme droughts, the continent's major rivers are running dry, including four of the largest rivers in Europe, along with their several tributaries. As a result, the entire ecosystem and economy of Europe are at risk, threatening life and livelihood of thousands of people. Stay tuned to learn the true extent of this drought and what it means for the people of Europe. There are four major rivers in Europe. The Danube River is around 1,700 miles long, starting in southwestern Germany and snaking all the way to the Black Sea. This mighty river passes through many countries, including Austria, Bulgaria, Croatia, Germany, Hungary, Moldova, Romania, Serbia, Slovakia, and Ukraine. Consequently, the Danube River is a leading source of electric power and drinking water for all of these countries. The second one is the Rhine River, which is 765 miles long and starts in Switzerland. The river passes through six countries, including Switzerland, Liechtenstein, Austria, Germany, France, and the Netherlands. The Rhine River is crucial for freight delivery for several cities. The third one is the Loire River, which is located in France. Known for magnificent historic castles along its shores, this river is significant for tourism in the area. It's also essential for freight shipping that allows goods to reach France. Finally, the fourth river is called the Po River, the longest river in Italy. 400 miles in length, this river flows across many cities, including Turin, Piacenza, and Ferrara. The Po River is a source of 35% of Italy's agriculture and a crucial component of industrial activities in the country. Now let's understand the gravity of the situation in Europe's rivers. The Danube River is the biggest in Europe, providing sustenance to scores of towns along its path. Unfortunately, historically high temperatures and epic drought have depleted the once mighty Danube, revealing large areas of mud-cracked river bottoms along the coastlines. One victim of the Danube's low water levels is the small Romanian port of Zimnica, where people relied on the Danube River for their livelihood. Countless cargo barges can be seen in Zimnica's dock, motionlessly lying in wait for a deeper passage. The locals in the area are forced to collect scanty rainwater for drinking purposes and to fulfill household chores. But this is the story of a single town. Everywhere along the Danube, cities and towns are compelled to drastically alter their way of life as the water flows at less than half its usual volume. The author of The Danube, A Journey Upriver from the Black Sea to the Black Forest describes the situation. At towns up and down the Danube, drought and climate change take on an existential meaning. In contrast to city dwellers, they're having this disaster unfold before their eyes. This observation rings true without a doubt as hundreds of villages across southern Romania are currently rationing water supplies and reducing farmland irrigation. However, this curtailment will eventually give rise to a bigger predicament as the whole of Europe relies on these farmlands for grain, corn, sunflowers, and vegetables. What's more is that Romania continues to be Europe's largest wheat producer, especially after Russia restricted Ukraine's wheat exports. But wheat farmers in the area are complaining that the decline in hydropower has cost them a fifth of their harvest. Can you imagine the effect of decreasing water levels in Europe's rivers will have on the agricultural sector and eventually the consumer? 
Scientists predict that this crisis will not only affect Europe's food supply, but also commerce, food access, energy systems, and overall ecology. Moreover, they believe that these waterways may never recover if temperatures continue to climb. Wait until you find out what has appeared on dried riverbeds. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more interesting content. The Danube River has become so dry at Novi Sad, Serbia, the people can easily walk across it, something the locals never thought possible. In addition, giant wharfs and their vessels have started to appear on dried riverbeds. People have spotted more than 20 sunken German warships from World War II. And not just that, but these warships contain more than 10,000 explosive devices, making sea travel much more dangerous through the region. If we look at the conditions along River Rhine, the state isn't any different. Barges responsible for carrying oil, coal, and essential commodities cannot travel as giant sandbars breach the river's midsection. The water level in the Po River stoops so low that the government had to declare a state of emergency in northern Italy at one point, as several acres of farmland were abandoned. Water is essential not only for crops, but also for various industries. For example, numerous nuclear power plants had to be shut down in France as the water from the rivers got too hot to cool down the plants efficiently. And as a result, the cost of electricity in France reached a record high level, more than 10 times the price of last year. Highlighting the gravity of the issue, Thomas Hine of the University of Natural Resources and Life Sciences said, Perhaps most alarming this year is the scope of the low water levels across the entire Danube Basin, from Bavaria to the Black Sea. The entire river is affected, which means we can't just pump water from one section to another to make up for the shortfall. Considering that the Danube Basin is spread across 800,000 square kilometers and includes 19 countries, declining water levels can affect millions of lives. And not just human lives, but also the species living underwater. Higher water temperatures mean lower oxygen content, which can kill fish and many other creatures in the water. In a wetland near Venice, almost one-third of clams died because of low oxygen levels in the Po River. What's more alarming is that the Danube River has reached 25 degrees Celsius. Another one and a half more degrees and all the trout in the river will die. Higher temperatures also trigger algae blooms which can be lethal for many underwater species. And this was the reason why more than 220,000 pounds of fish washed up dead on the shores of German rivers, including the Neckar, Moselle, and the Ode. Scientists have rightfully pointed out that it's the smaller rivers that will suffer the most. That is because once the rivers become completely parched, they will lose the entire biodiversity community and the effects will be permanent. Experts believe the current state of Europe's rivers results from damming, deforestation, industrial pollution, wastewater discharges, and over-irrigation along shorelines. Explaining the cause, Gabriel Singer, an ecologist at the University of Innsbruck, Austria, says the rivers across Europe are quote-unquote fragmented and vulnerable. This can be seen from the fact that the lower Danube faces drought while the upper section of the river is at risk of flooding. He believes the real problem lies with the extensive modification of rivers and river basins that have made it challenging to hold water for longer periods. He insists, healthy natural ecosystems function as a sponge that gives and takes water, but ours have lost this ability. What happens is that heavy rainfall cannot penetrate dry soils and results in the wastage of high amounts of water. And this surface overflow doesn't benefit rivers or the nearby aquifers. Instead, all the water is lost for good. Thus, the solution suggested by authorities to fix low water levels will fall flat as dredging the rivers deeper will only aggravate the problem of surface overflow. Long-term plans to slow global warming will remain crucial to reverse the alarming situation in Europe. But along with future sustainability endeavors, immediate actions are required to de-stress the continent's waterways. Regardless of remedial actions, at this point, adaptation measures are necessary as low water levels in Europe's rivers become the new normal. As the extreme weather conditions following global climate change are not going away anytime soon, people must adapt and learn to live with it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to our channel. Also, press that notification bell icon to stay updated with our latest content. 
Please share your opinions and feedback in the comments section below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more surprising discoveries from around the world.